and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Mr. David Rosa. He's joining us here from Neuro One. And Neuro One is a medical technology company focused on the development and commercialization of minimally invasive and high-definition, high-precision solutions for a number of neurological conditions. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, David. How are you? I'm doing fine, Neil. Thanks for having me. Give us some insight into your professional background and talk briefly about your role at Neuro One. Sure. Um, I've been in the medical device industry for over 30 years now uh, in a variety of different roles, uh, senior management roles, um, and and more recently over the, well, I shouldn't say more recently, over the past uh, 15 years, I've been primarily CEO of early stage um, development or commercialization companies. And I've spanned uh, a wide variety of fields, everything from orthopedics to incontinence to uh, a variety of cardiovascular uh, uh, market segment, uh, now neurosurgery. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, in 20, I believe it was uh, late 2015, um, I actually met with uh, one of the co-founders of NeuroOne, and uh, he and I um, had been introduced uh, years before. He had asked me f- uh, for some advice on fundraising, um, and uh, I gave him some advice, but it must not have worked too well because he came back to me again mm-hmm. in 2015 <laughs> uh, asking me to help him. And then uh, after about nine months, I actually joined the, the uh, company as uh, president and CEO and that's the role I have today. Um, and th- to answer the second part of the question, uh, you mentioned in, in the uh, introduction that we're developing and looking to commercialize uh, what we refer to as high definition thin film electrode uh, technology. And it's for a variety of neurosurgical procedures, which I'll touch on a little later. But really, th- these devices are lighter and thinner and really most commercially available devices that are out there today. Uh, And as you mentioned, uh, one of the key features is that it's got the ability to provide higher resolution than what you would see today, as as well as really combining multiple functions using the same device. So, and when I refer to the functions of the electrodes, it might be helpful to to just clarify that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So today, Electrodes are typically used to perform one of three functions. It's usually either uh, recording electrical activity, uh, primarily in the brain, sometimes other areas of body, stimulating tissue uh, for therapeutic purposes, or uh, destroying um, targeted problematic areas uh, in the brain. Uh, For example, you see this quite frequently with epilepsy patients where they will use uh, electrodes to destroy the tissue uh, in an effort to eliminate seizures. Are there other diseases and conditions that this is uh, useful in as well? You mentioned epilepsy. Uh, I'm sure maybe Parkinson's or tremors, things of that nature as well. Yeah, there's there's really a, a wide variety of them. And, and I would say that really anywhere that you have a need for stimulation uh, or recording or ablation, um, these electrodes would apply. So today, uh, you you hear primarily about conditions like epilepsy, which you mentioned in, in Parkinson's. Essential tremors is uh, another neurological condition that these devices are used for. But uh, some of the other uh, markets that, quite frankly, are larger are treating uh, using stimulation to treat patients that have chronic back pain. Uh, so these are patients that have had uh, failed prior surgeries and are still dealing with pain. Uh, other areas, uh, uh, s- certain forms of incontinence use stimulation uh, to treat incontinence. Pain, uh, so pain in the extremities, uh, they would use uh, stimulation for. Uh, and then uh, wh- what I would tell you is the uh, one of the other areas which is getting a lot of attention today is, um, you know, mental health. So uh, there, there's been some data demonstrating that researchers have found the areas of the brain that control mood, um, and they're looking to use these uh, types of electrodes to stimulate those areas in an effort to uh, prevent uh, conditions like depression or uh, OCD. 
You mentioned that your product is a, a thinner and offers a higher resolution. Uh, for someone unfamiliar with the technology, I- explain how this uh, how this higher resolution, this higher definition, actually benefits patients much much more than what the uh, the tradi- traditional treatment approach is with electrodes. Sure. So uh, I'll give you a great example. Uh, if you're a patient that suffers with epilepsy, the uh, the doctor's primary goal. Uh, when you come in for an initial surgery is is to really identify the area or areas that are triggering the seizures. Uh, so they use these electrodes uh, to, 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 in essence, find those areas. Um, so you can imagine that the end goal of the surgeon is to remove this brain tissue. And if you're a patient, you don't want any more of your brain tissue removed, uh, you know, than you uh, have to to resolve the seizures. And you want to make sure, obviously, that they get all that tissue. Uh, so the, the second example is brain tumors. They will also use these electrodes to, to really define the outer borders of the tumor. So if you're a patient in any of these conditions, again, you don't want any more or any less than what's needed to resolve the situation. Mm-hmm. So the more precise uh, you can be uh, in the diagnostic stage, um, the better off uh, uh, you would be. And that, that's one of the benefits of having a high resolution or greater precision electrode technology. And I also understand that you're connected in some way to the Mayo Clinic. Can you um, let us in on that connection? Sure. So uh, back in 2015, uh, prior to actually myself coming on board, the co-founder um, actually forged an agreement with the Mayo Clinic and the Mayo Clinic uh, today is uh, an investor in Neuro One, uh, but also, and really more importantly, a uh, close development partner. So over over the years, um, the Mayo physicians have been really instrumental in, in helping us develop uh, our initial electrode technology. They've also performed uh, a great deal of testing on the device, both in animals um, and then, uh, in, in fact, they, they actually performed the first uh, human procedure with this technology. So it's a really close partnership. Uh, we're in communication with these physicians, typically on a weekly basis. Um, so, um, you know, they've been a great partner to work with over the years. And now, moving forward, what do you see as the future of NeuroOne's electro technology you know, as it's used to help in these neurological conditions? Yeah, what we're really looking to do, and this is one of the primary features of the device, is to combine functions. So I told you that electrodes can record, ablate, or stimulate. The the problem with that is that most patients have to undergo multiple procedures because the electrodes can only perform one function. Whereas what we're trying to bring to the table, in addition to the minimally uh, invasive technology, the thinness, um, the, the high resolution, is the ability to combine multiple functions in one device so that the patient only undergoes one surgery. So all the conditions that I mentioned, uh, you know, prior Parkinson's, epilepsy, uh, back pain, those are the areas that we're really focused on right now. And and again, our goal is to minimize the number of surgeries uh, a patient has to undergo uh, for diagnosis and treatment. And uh, the feedback that we have from physicians as well as patients so far uh, is that they're very excited about a technology like this because going through brain surgery is is uh, obviously not um, uh, something that's uh, probably on most people's top 10 list to do. And if you can eliminate or reduce the number of procedures they have to go through because these are really invasive more than likely going to be a safer uh, outcome for these patients. Well, give us a website where we can learn more about Neuro One, if you would, please. Sure. It's uh, www.n, uh, as in Nancy, uh, the number one, M as in Michael, T as in Thomas, C as in Charlie.com. David, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, lending us some of your time. Looking forward to our next conversation as Neuro One's technology advances and becomes more widespread. I appreciate uh, the opportunity again, Neil.
Uh, have a wonderful day. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with David Rosa, President and CEO of Nero One. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 